for town council for September 7th at 7 o'clock. All town council members are present. Would you please join with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item up for tonight under number two, Parker Chamber of Commerce updates. Do we have anyone from the Parker Chamber of Commerce? Oh. Okay. Uh, item number three, Downtown Business Alliance updates. Do we have anyone from the Downtown Business Alliance? Michelle, did they know they were on for tonight? I'm wondering if they thought we skipped Monday night and just don't have it. They should know that it gets switched to the Tuesday. Okay. So All right. We, we can make sure future times that they are aware of that. Right. Sounds good. We will move on to public comment. Uh, for Parker Town Council, public comment can be taken three ways. We allow for you to comment, obviously, in the room, and we're glad to have you back. We allow for comments available by Zoom, and we also allow for comments in writing. Comments in writing are to be delivered to the town clerk's email by five o'clock on the day of meeting. We currently have four uh, items that have been entered into public comments via the email system, and they are all regarding the uh, um, construction noise and traffic out on Motsenbacher, which we are continuing to deal with. So um, do we have anybody in the room for any items not on the agenda? I see Arlen Cook has hers in here for any items not on the agenda. Come on up, Arlen. And uh, if you'll state your name and address for the record, and then I'll start three minutes for you. Arlen Cook, 507 Venable Creek Street. Okay. You've heard from many of my concerned, frustrated neighbors over and over throughout the past eight plus months regarding the deteriorating quality of life of residents in Straw Ranch and anthology subdivision for in months and months. A few of the ongoing issues, not all, that have been caused by the increase of traffic, both residential and construction, that have been expressed many times by the residents are. First, although the intersection at Mossenbacher and French Creek have been, has been an ongoing danger, now with school resuming, there is even a greater safety concern here. It's impossible to cross or make safe turns at this intersection. The northbound lane of Monsenbacher, just after Kaiser Creek, approaching French Creek, there is a blind curve in the road coupled with sloping gradient, which contributes to the safety and speed issues at this intersection. It is just a catastrophic accident waiting to happen with grave consequences. Secondly, the traffic noise itself. The inability to enjoy our backyard and or have windows open due to the excessive noise and fumes, not to mention the screech screeching jake breaks. Although the rise, also the rise of respiratory issues, i.e. asthma, due to excessive exhaust fumes inhaled by residents living along this corridor. Thirdly, excessive speeds. Pleas for more policing and or permanent electronic speed signs <coughs> have been ignored until recently a temporary <coughs> sign was installed. The speed limit must be decreased and enforced. When you cross Hess Road on Monsenbacher heading north, the speed limit immediately drops 35 miles an hour, and this is not even a residential area. The road itself is a problem. The concrete, which I understand is less expensive to use than the blacktop, has huge expansion joints causing traffic noise, noise to reverberate throughout the adjacent homes and areas. Although Hess Road carries a heavy volume of traffic, it is not nearly as noisy as it is blacktop. We, the taxpayers of this area, feel the approval of all these new building developments along Mossenbacher reflect poor planning on the part of the city as to the impact on the current residents. In May, at our HOA meeting, Mayor Tolberg, I'm sorry, stated that he would um, something would be done about construction traffic before the start of summer. Well, here it is, the close of summer, and nothing has changed. If anything, the conditions have worsened. These problems must be addressed and rectified sooner than later. Thank you, and I hope you take this to heart. Thank you. All right, anybody else wishing to address the council in the public comments? 
Do we have anybody online? We do. Okay. Um, just one person, um, Tej, and I, the call. Right. Tej, you. Not seeing him up on the screen yet. Yeah, just one moment. Okay. Great. Tej, if you will state your name and address for the record, and then I will give you three minutes and let you know when you're approaching the end of that. Tej, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Great. If you'll state your name and address for the record, and then we'll give you three minutes for your public comment. Go ahead. Um, so I second uh, everything that uh, this, the speaker um, before said, especially about the French Creek at Montenbacher. I live in the area, and that's a very dangerous intersection. Um, having said that, uh, I'd like to take you back to the public hearing we had last month on the 2nd of August on the sketch plan for the Tentary community. Uh, a number of homeowners spoke during that hearing and raised several concerns. And one of the major ones was flooding in the basements and sidewalks due to high level of groundwater along Elia Drive, Bensley Trail, and potentially on Buffington Trail. And uh, after listening to the deliberations and comment from the developer that day, I felt uh, that the issue was misunderstood and didn't get the attention it should have. Uh, yes, homeowners were angry at the two communities, but they were also very concerned about uh, what this new development will do to already high groundwater level in the area. And rightly so, because uh, who knows what will happen when they dig hundreds of new holes for new homes and start packing the dirt in the area. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but my layman logic says that water level in the whole area will go up, making the already bad problems worse. And I think the time to address the issue is now, during the design phase for the new community, uh, because once the final plan is approved and the builders start digging, it will be too late for some of these homes. And I do have a suggestion, and I sincerely hope that the developer and staff takes it into account uh, in consideration as they go into detailed design of the new community. And my suggestion is that you move some of the open areas that are inside Pantara community to the outside in between Pantara and Anthology so that the new homes that are being built will be far away enough that they do not directly impact the groundwater level uh, in the existing homes. And that will probably mean that the new designs will have uh, fewer homes, um, maybe a dozen fewer homes or so, but that would be a small price to pay to make sure the existing homeowners do not get flooded out of their homes. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. DeCall. Anyone else in the room for public comment? Okay, we'll move on to our item number five, reports, items, and comments from Mayor and Council. We will start over to my left, Council Member Hefta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to go to the big picture with the town, um, and that was a wonderful um, presentation by uh, many of the leaders in the town. Um, also went to the Public Works picnic. Thank you, Tom Williams and his group, for a, a lovely picnic and getting to know your staff and employees. Um, and also on a personal note, had a chance to go to Park Request and Art in the Park, and what wonderful events they were uh, with my family and husband. Councilman uh, Barrington. So I attended my first uh, Douglas County Housing Partnership meeting, and uh, most several other agenda items that we had a presentation by a development group regarding the proposed 225 unit development in Douglas County. I also, on a personal note, attended Park Request as well, and I was lucky enough to do a ride along with our chief of police. That's it. I'm trying to top that. <laughs> uh, I'll try. 
um, went to the IREA uh, Summer so uh, Showcase uh, with, with a few other council members and, uh, and staff. Uh, the highlight was the rebranding of IREA Accord Electric Cooperative. So IREA no longer. Um, Dr. Cobb uh, met with a uh, fellow board member of Council Commons, uh, Council Member Moulton. Uh, Dr. Cobb, we had a work session. Uh, we continued conversations on greenhouse gas emission budget rulemaking. That is a very, uh, very long discussion that could potentially have some significant consequences on, on infrastructure development here in the future at a regional level and even cascade down to the local level. So I, I am uh, consulting with staff on that as well. Um, looking forward, uh, I have a new 47 board retreat uh, tomorrow, uh, as well as a board meeting Thursday. That is all. Councilman so. Hendricks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last week I attended the, the Centennial Airport Community Noise Roundtable. Um, many topics were discussed, uh, including a uh, recent federal court decision regarding the Denver Metroplex project. Uh, flight paths could be affecting certain neighborhoods, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, also, we will be presenting to us in the future study session. Um, uh, like uh, Council Member Hepta, uh, I also attended Art in the Park. That was a nice event to see the uh, community up. And finally, as a liaison to the Parker Senior Center, I wanted to remind everyone they're having an open air market this Saturday from 9 to 5. Uh, you can see vendors, uh, garage sales, local artisans at their facility. Councilman Public. Yeah, I went to the Douglas County Housing Partnership with Councilman Barrington. I'm going to be taking an alternate position there, so <laughs> good luck. And then uh, I wanted to thank Public Works for their hosting just that kind of summer picnic thing in there. But you know what's really nice, because you don't get to, see, you know, there's a lot of staff here, and you don't get to see all of them very often, or if at all. And I really enjoyed getting a chance to talk to some of your staff over there. That was great fun. And the only other thing I'm trying to do is, I hope someday we can have a meeting for the uh, Greater Parker Foundation. We seem to have trouble getting that off the ground. Councilman Rivera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I too attended the uh, Employee Appreciation Picnic at Key Walk. Um, a great day, obviously, incredible food. Um, appreciate. Uh, those guys cooking and uh, it was uh, uh, really good. Uh, big picture was uh, awesome. I think I made it to the morning. I can't remember which one it was. That. Sorry. Good morning. morning. Okay. And then um, and then uh, I too got a ride along. Um, it was uh, amazing. I could spend the day. It was a uh, uh, quote unquote busy day. Um, started with uh, Sergeant Holmes, um, then uh, Officer uh, Bernadoni, and then finished with uh, my old friend Sergeant Cummings, which was a great cap to be in. Um, so just uh, just a great day. So thank you again to the PD and uh, it, was a, it was fun fun to learn. So uh, to our town administrator, please uh, notify the chief of police that there might be five calls for ride alongs <laughs> here on the dais. <laughs> and uh, my only comment announcement is um, we'll be calling a special session of the council for October 11th to further discussions, and that will be posted in a timely manner. Awesome. Next up on the agenda is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and one vote. There will be no separate discussion of the consent agenda unless council votes to remove an item for individual discussion. Ordinances on the consent agenda are for introduction only and will not be removed for discussion. So council, you have items 6A, B, C, D, E, and F, as well as G for your consent. Mayor, I would like to remove <coughs> or remove ordinance number 9.340. Well, do you want to take that off the consent agenda or not? Let, let me take uh, your, your other item first. Okay. The other item is contracts, item F, contracts over $100,000 off the consent agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to remove item number 6F from the consent agenda. Chris has the vote ready for you.
Who are you reading from? Okay, so on 6F, we will remove that item for separate discussion on the consent agenda. Is there any other items for the consent agenda to be removed? The other item was ordinance number 9-340, item E, first reading on a metropolitan district. <clears throat> Mayor, if I could point out that ordinances for first reading are not to be removed, it's for introduction only. Mr. Mayor, if I could offer a quick possible solution, we could make the motions excluding E, if I could move to approve. Yep. Okay. Yep, so let me get through that. Okay. Any exceptions? So any other exceptions? Nope. See, none. I will entertain a motion then on uh, the rest of the consent. Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve consent agenda items. Consent agenda items A, B, C, D, F, and G, please. Okay, so, so sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, one more time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to approve consent agenda items A, B, C, D, and G, please. All right, so council, is there a second? Awesome. Okay, Tom, motion is made by council member Rivera, second by council member Hendricks. Chris will have the vote for you on 6A, B, C, D, and G. You asked me to leave a study session because of item E. So we're going to vote. And now you're asking me to vote on it in the consent agenda? So we have a vote on the table, so we'll vote on that on a separate uh, No, you left it in. No, E was, so we're doing A, B, C, D, and G. G, all right. Yeah, all right. So council, do you vote on those four? All right, and that motion passes unanimously. Is there a motion for 6E, ordinance number 9.340? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve item 6E, please. Okay. Councilmember Rivera. Second. And Councilmember Hendricks. Motion is made by Councilmember Rivera, second by Councilmember Hendricks. Please vote when prompted to do so. And then so the record is clear, Councilmember Poe will be abstaining uh, because of a declared conflict of interest. So how do you get that off my cat my screen there? So we'll do. I will. I'll, yeah. I'll mark the end of the thing. Yeah. And that minute, that motion passes five to zero with Cheryl Poe abstaining. For the record. And item number F, I'll entertain a motion on that. Now that's been removed from the consent agenda. Again, I don't know if you want to have a, dis a discussion with staff on uh, item 6F since it was removed from the consent agenda. I'm assuming that's what you're looking for, Council yes, Member Yes, that's what I would appreciate. Okay. Tom, you can come Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tom Williams, Director of Public Works and Engineering. Um, this evening, Bob Ekstrom, the project manager for um, the item that's in front of you, is here to answer any questions that you have. Um, but beyond what's in the Council Action Forum, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Council, any questions? We'll start with Councilman Rivera. Any yes. questions for him? Councilman Boat? Is, is he going to give an overview of what this is? Um, we can. We can give you an overview of what's presented in the CAF, if that would be helpful. I think, you know, I'm doing this because of the interest of transparency. Sure. So I think a brief overview is appropriate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tom, do you want to go into that? Of course. So um, this is a contract for the preliminary design of the widening of Lincoln Avenue. Um, this item may sound familiar to you all because we've been talking about this project for about a year, a year and a half now. Um, it's been in the town budget for 2021 as a $500,000 expenditure. And in May of this year, we presented an intergovernmental agreement uh, to town council, which we entered into with Douglas County, which, uh, which uh, basically identified the allocation of the funds towards that preliminary design. And as part of that IGA, um, there was six consultants that were going to be submitting statements of qualifications 
and it was a basically a, um, a competitive process where they submitted the statement of qualifications to town staff by those county staff, but we evaluated those proposals and uh, scored them based on criteria. And based on the scoring from town staff and Douglas County staff, we selected uh, Felsberg, Holt, and Ulovig as the consultant that was most qualified to perform the preliminary design for Douglas County and the town of Parker. And we had negotiated a contract with them, which is on this evening's uh, consent agenda for approval. Um, this preliminary design will kick off as soon as council approves the contract and we'll go through the rest of this year into 2022, which we hope to conclude the preliminary design by the end of 2022. And then we will request additional funding from town council for 2023 to actually finalize the design for the widening of Lincoln Avenue. And then with the hopes of constructing it in 2024. Thank you. Okay. So we'll, we'll continue. Josh, any questions based on that? Okay, yes, sir. Councilman Pope, any other questions? Thank you. Uh, I just, I, mean, I just think the council actually formed captures everything that Tom said quite succinctly. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Barrington? Councilman Hefta? Oh, just a comment that I, I appreciate you going through um, that with the public so everyone understands that there's a process, a competitive bid process in place with the town for different engineering groups on the design and the construction. And there are there's an intergovernmental agreement for, for funds that come in from the county. And that um, as much as we would like to move this project along in a much more speedier manner, but all these things take time. And so when you finally get to the implementation of widening uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Avenue, um, it is several years later. And so the public understands that that getting things done in, in the town, it does take place, but many times there are agreements, there's money, there's funding, there's contracts, there's bids. And so when we do hear things that need to take place and need to be corrected, just because it's not immediate at the next meeting doesn't mean it's not being worked on by our very industrious directors in our town. So I just wanted to point that out, that the town council hears the citizens, that they do take action on things, and we do appreciate the hard work of your group on this time. Thank you. All right, council, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I move to approve staff recommendation for the approval of the professional services agreement with Felsberg, Holt, and Albert. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Councilmember Pope, second by Councilmember Hefta. Please vote and let's get set up. And that passes unanimously. On to item number seven, public hearing. Our first public hearing tonight is on Anthology North, Plan Development Amendment number three. And I think we have Brianna Simon with us. So Council, I just want to go back through here and um, remind you that we're doing a public hearing. So um, I'm going to open the public hearing at 7.23 p.m. And just to discuss the purpose of this is to talk about the location, generally located at the south side of Hessen Chambers Road and Motzenbacher Road, and Brianna will provide her staff um, uh, presentation on that. We will have a chance to ask her questions. We have the applicant here tonight. I don't know if they'll have a presentation or Chris will just be humming the song for us, or what, but, uh, um, but we'll, uh, we'll have an applicant presentation, council will have a chance to ask that, we'll open it up for public testimony, council, you can, uh, then we'll close it, you can make comments, uh, ask the applicant to address any of those questions that are outstanding, and then we'll go into deliberations and vote. So, clear what we're doing? And then Brianna, as, as I said last time, if there's any questions that come up that are out of the scope, we'll punt those to the town administrator's office and she can get back to the town council on that. All right, so with that, Brianna, we'll let you kick it off for us. Perfect. Thank you, Mayor and Town Council. This is a proposal for a plan development amendment for the PD map in Anthology North. The subject property is located on the south side of Hess Road between Chambers Road and Matsubaka Road. 
The applicant, PCS Group, is proposing a minor PD amendment to the Anthology North PD to relocate the proposed fire station location. The proposed amendment is in response to the comments provided from town residents concerning the fire station location found in segment three. The applicant is requesting the rezoning to move the fire station location to segment two away from the current residence. The fire station location is proposed to move from the north side of Hess and west of Chambers to the future intersection of Chambers Road and Great Plain Way. The proposed relocation will be a one-to-one -one swap of open space. There will be no decrease in open space found in the plan development. The applicant, staff, and South Metro Fire District have worked closely on the relocation. A high-level analysis was conducted on the access, a building fit test, and conceptual grading. Staff has received support from all agencies for the new location. The final layout will be determined and evaluated through a future site plan process. Staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is, con is consistent with the master plan, provides adequate access, infrastructure, and drainage facilities, and the project will not result in additional, additional municipal service costs. The project satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance to rezone the property, and all referral agency comments have been addressed. Planning Commission heard this item on August 12th and recommended approval. Therefore, staff and Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve the PD amendment to the Anthology North PD to relocate the proposed fire station. Staff is available for any questions council members may have, and the applicant is also present and would like to give a presentation to Great, thank you. We will go to presentations Question or staff questions here, Councilmember Dyer. Uh, it's it's not a question, but um, I've I've been messaged that the Facebook volume is too low, so I don't know if there's a adjustment that can be. Scott, is that you? Okay, thank you. John, anything else on? Okay, Councilmember Barrington. Councilmember Hector. Just the egress and the ingress. Um, just if you could briefly address that. Um, from the local area. So the the proposed location will have access off Great Plains Way. It will not be off Chambers Road. The engineering team has reviewed that, and so is the fire district, and they have determined that will work. Thank you. Councilmember Hendricks. Councilmember Pope. Yes. With your discussions with some <coughs> Metro Fire. Was there any discussion about, because this is a more of a future development than the site they have now, will there be a delay of delivery of services down into this area? So South Metro is available this evening if you'd like to ask any of those questions specifically to them. Okay. Is well, that a discussion you had? Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get the chief on right after the um, applicant. That's we all I have. Okay. We'll get for him, but hang on to that question then, sure. Councilmember, we're question. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you, ma'am. And we have the applicant here. Who's Good evening, sir. You will state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Chris Elliott. My address is 7353 South Alton Way, Centennial. And I have an extremely long presentation. Awesome. Very long. Um, but I'm going to suspend that tonight. Um, it, I think this is one of those rare moments in uh, our world when uh, we can actually come up with a proposal that ends up being a win-win-win. In this particular situation, the concerns that the Horse Creek community had about the location of the fire station are valid, and there was an opportunity to address it. And we moved it from the location shown, I don't know, your, your graphics are better than ours, um, move it from uh, Hess Road and, and up by Horse Creek uh, into the community and located at uh, uh, Great Plain Way and uh, Chambers Road. Um, we did uh, some extensive preliminary design work. Uh, we were happy with the results of that. We met with uh, the folks at South Metro. We met with the folks in uh, 
Horse Creek, and I'd like to give a, a particular shout out to Ian Elfner in Horse Creek and uh, uh, Mike Del Orfano at uh, South Metro, both of whom uh, contributed a lot to the discussion, and uh, we're happy, and we hope you are too. Excellent. Council, we'll start to my left with questions. Councilmember Barrington? No questions, thank you. Councilmember Hefta? Can we promote the um, the chief? Yes. Oh, so Councilman Pope can ask a question in this one. <coughs> Hi, this is Michael Lafano with South Metro Fire Rescue. Hey, good evening, sir. Thanks for joining us. Councilmember Pogue had a question for you uh, regarding, and then we'll, we'll also let any other council member ask a question. Yeah, Chief, I was just wondering if you could explain um, if there will be a delay in responses to this area, especially in the southern portions, since the area proposed is going to be in a future stage of development than the one you're currently in. Yeah, actually my understanding is that this is a, a bit of an upgrade, whereas the original one was planned for segment three and this is in segment two. Uh, but Chris or Matt um, from the developer um, uh, might be able to answer that or confirm that. Um, and so we're looking at approximately five years out from what I understand um, to be able to have the ground ready in order to start construction. Um, so uh, keep in mind too that we have a current fire station, uh, Station 46, off of Stroh, just west of Parker. Um, it is also serving this area, as well as the stations to the north. So um, this will be an improvement to existing areas, as well as to be able to handle uh, the new growth to the south. Um, but as of this moment, we're not concerned about the timing. Thank you for your clarification, Chief. Excellent. We'll just go down. Would Councilman Hurt, any questions for the Chief? No, appreciate it. Appreciate you being here, Chief. Councilman Hurt? No, thank you for your time. Councilman Deck? Councilman Barrington? Councilman Hapta? Thank you for the timing on that, Chief. Just so again, the public understands that this is about five years out. And then after that, they'll be breaking ground at that five year point. Chief? Uh, from what I understand, again, they might be able to clarify, but. Um, I think we were shooting for pad ready about that time, a little bit more extension of the road to the south. Um, so yes, being being ready to construct a fire station at the time that we're ready to embark on that. Thank you. And just, uh, Mr. Elliott, just so we're clear, is that, is the Chief's assessment right? About five years to pad ready? I think that's about right. Okay. We're County and getting a lot of plans approved because this will end up being one of the first things we get. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, sir. All right, we will go to public comment. Anybody in the room or on Zoom wishing to make public comment, if you'll start your way towards the podium in the room or if you'll raise your hand on Zoom. Danette, do we have anyone for public comment? No public comment. Okay. No one in the room? All right. So we will uh, close that out and uh, the applicant has no questions to ask from the public, so I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing at 7.33. We'll bring it back to Council for any deliberation. We'll start to my right. Councilman Rivera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a, uh, I think uh, <laughs> Chris put it very well, this is a win-win-win. Actually, I think it's four wins. It's, uh, it's, it's well done on, on all teams. Um, I find the criteria have been met for this amendment specifically um, Criteria one, the need exists. Um, criteria two, the parcel is in the correct site. Um, criteria five, adequate circulation, down in the heart of the development. And then um, lastly, uh, criteria eight, um, it uh, definitely is consistent with the master plan. So it uh, um, addresses the criteria very, very well. And I just I want to recognize the teams that came together here. Um, obviously our own team in town um, Brianna and, uh, and community development, um, and I'm sure engineering was involved, so appreciate that. Um, obviously, Mr. Elliott, his team, um, outstanding. Um, again, South Metro, uh, appreciate it. And lastly, 
um, and most importantly, the folks in Forest Creek, um, specifically my friend, Mr. Ian Elker. <laughs> Ian and I might always agree, but I truly, truly appreciate his uh, leadership with this committee. Um, he, he did a great job in, in uh, presenting a, a good argument for his community, and that, that, that must be recognized tonight. So well done, Ian. Um, as I said, this is a win, 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 win. Councilor Clark. No further questions. Thank you. Councilor Hendricks. I agree. It's a great example of collaboration, and I also agree with Councilman uh, Councilmember Rivera uh, meets the Crack Nine criteria for the town, and also read the Planning Commission's report, and I agree with that, along with the 2035 Master Plan. Great. Councilmember Dyack. I don't think there's any criteria that Josh has not touched. <laughs> um, I don't know what I can say. Um, <laughs> But uh, the only thing I was going to say is redundant um, is that this is this is um, strangely one of those few times uh, where the developer is the hero, uh, working with uh, South Metro and working with the community. Um, too many times we, we see, um, not too many times, but um, more often than not, um, um, that that is not the case, and um, it's 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 good to um, to see. Everybody working together to find an ideal solution to a to a potential problem, and um, kudos to everybody. Thank you, Councilor Barrington. I, I also think this is just a great example of collaboration, and appreciate the fact that you were so willing to listen to our citizens. And after reading all the facts, I agree it's an all-around win for everyone, and I I appreciate it. Yeah, just to state again, um, when one of these um, rezoning requests comes to town council, uh, there's extensive work put into that application by the applicant and by the town employees. And um, the applicant must meet the nine criteria and an evaluation and submit an evaluation to to our staff, and then our staff evaluates that, and um, that criteria is gone over in depth and scrutinized by many, many different people. Um, so in this particular case, the applicant met the nine criteria, and um, so it's a win-win overall. Great. Council, I'll entertain a motion on ordinance number 3.308.3. I move to approve ordinance number 3.308.3 on second reading. I'll second. Is that correct? Okay. Motion is made by Councilmember Dyack, seconded by Councilmember Barrington. Please vote when prompted to do so. And that motion passes unanimously. Next up, item number B is a public hearing on Parker North First Amendment, Track D, Property Annexation. And I think, Bryce, you're going to be leading us through this one. So again, Council, I'm going to open up the public hearing. We are going to hear from our team, from Rice, and then you have a chance to ask questions. Uh, do we have the applicant here? We are the applicant. Then you can ask Bryce questions again. You can get two rounds out of it. We'll open it for public comment. We'll close that. We'll bring it back to the council for debate, uh, conversation, and a motion. So I will go ahead and open this public hearing at 7.38. And Bryce, you can take it from there. Thank you, Mayor. Members of council, as noted, before you tonight is the proposed annexation and zoning of a town-owned property known as Parker North Track D. Subject property is located in unincorporated Douglas County and is adjacent to the town of Parker to the north, south, and west. The Parker North Track D property is located on the east side of Parker River, north of Parkland Way and south of Lincoln Avenue. Immediately north of the property is the multi-tenant retail building with Tokyo Zillow's and Dr. Dillman tenant. Immediately south of the property is a commercial building that's an operating and I believe there's a, a commercial on 
Uh, subject property is approximately 0.27 acres and is owned by the town of Clarkford. The town is processing an annexation and is proposing to zone the property PF or public facilities, which will allow for the construction of a multi-use sidewalk that crosses an existing drainage soil on the property and is adjacent to Park Road. The proposed annexation is for approximately again 0.27 acres um, and complies with the 1-6 contiguity rule for adjacency to the town of Parker. Uh, the site still borders Douglas County to the west. This site is located within the town's planning area. It is consistent with the Parker 2035 master plan and it is identified in the town's 2023 model. Bryce, can I interrupt for a moment and ask you to speak up? We've got some technical difficulties with um, some of the sound tonight, and people can't hear you very well. Absolutely. Thank you. The general land use plan within the Parker 2035 master plan identifies this property as being within the central commercial character area. The property is outlined in blue in the map. Uh, the central commercial designation recommends retail, services, offices, restaurant, entertainment, and then the pedestrian connectivity between those uses. The proposed zoning will allow for the construction of an important pedestrian and bicycle connection connecting these commercial uses in the area. This aligns with the multimodal goals in the Parker 2035 Master Plan, the Transportation Master Plan, and the Parker Road Corridor Plan. In addition, the annexation and zoning fulfills the town of Parker's goal of actively pursuing annexation to allow for continuity of services within the planning area. The proposed zoning is consistent with the master plan, has adequate access infrastructure and drainage facilities, and the project will not result in any additional municipal service costs that the town is not prepared to incur. Staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project satisfies the nine criteria required in the land development ordinance to rezone the property and referral agency comments have been addressed. Staff recommends that the town council approve the Parker Tr North Track D property annexation and rezoning. And as always, staff is available for any questions you may have. Great, thank you, Bryce. And we will go to questions from council, but Bryce, if anything comes up out of the scope of this uh, annexation hearing, uh, we'll punt it to the town administrator's office for follow-up and, and back to the council. So I'll start on my left. Council Member Hefta, uh, yes, questions please. for staff. Yes, what type of, for clarification purposes, what type of zoning is for public facilities? Could you just briefly describe that? Sure, P public facilities is, is what you would expect it allows for a wide variety of, of public uses, schools, town facilities, um, water and sanitation utility facilities, those types of uses. In particular, this site is 0.27 acres. It's got a drainage swale on it. Um, it's really not conducive for most of those uses, uh, but it is conducive for the uh, proposed sidewalk, multi-use sidewalk connection. Thank you. Councilman Barrington. No questions for each other. Councilman Hendricks. Councilman Polk. Just one. For the public facility use, are you strictly thinking sidewalk in the future? <clears throat> so, it, it, as noted, uh, the property is, uh, there's a swale on it, um, and the shape and the size of the property really is only conducive to that sidewalk connection, that trail connection, and the existing swale, which is also a facility that serves yeah, uh, public just, infrastructure. But that's basically what you're thinking. There's nothing else that you're planning on. That is accurate. Side. It would be okay. solely the site. Thank you. Connection. Appreciate it. That's one of the no questions. All right. With that, we'll end our grilling of rights there, and we will open it for a public comment. Anyone in the room wishing to make public comment? Don't all run at once here, but anyone in the room wishing to make public comment? Or did that, do we have anybody online? And no public comments. All right, and we will close this public hearing at 7.44 and we'll bring it back to the council 
for any questions, I'll start in the same order for debate and uh, any comments, Council Member Hefta? Uh, I would just annotate that I, I believe this meets the nine criteria as outlined uh, in the ordinance. Council Member Barrington? Yeah, after reading everything, I see that it also meets all the requirements for annexation and it also uh, in, in line with the strategic goals, supports an active community and promotes a safe and healthy community. I think it's going to be a great addition. Councilor Dyer. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the trail or yeah, trail connection. It is, it is 10 feet. Yeah. Councilmember Hendricks. I, I agree with uh, my brother council members and also have read the planning commission unanimous recommendation over. I concur as well. Councilor Rivera. Uh, I too find that it meets the nine criteria, uh, specifically criteria number eight, uh, also consistent with the town master plan that was identified with the multimodal goals and the continuity, continuity of our boundaries. And then also item nine, uh, public facility. Obviously, I'm um, keen towards uh, wastewater, stormwater, and uh, this is definitely important, and I, I, I more encourage this in the town's hands, and uh, we can maintain it very well. And uh, yeah, so I think definitely number nine, and I appreciate your time. Great. Thank you, everyone. And just to add, um, Council Member Rivera, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on the continuity of our boundaries. That is a very strategic point in this piece of property. So thank you for bringing that up. Council, we have three items to vote on here, and I'll need a motion on resolution number 21 036. I move to approve resolution number uh, 21 036. I'll second it. Motion is made by Councilmember Hendricks, seconded by Councilmember Pogue. Please vote when prompted. And that resolution passes unanimously. Uh, the next item I will entertain a motion on is ordinance number 2.277. I move to approve ordinance number 2.277 on second reading. Second. Motion is made by Councilmember Hepta, seconded by Councilmember Rivera. Please vote when prompted. And that ordinance passes unanimously. Last one, ordinance number 3.359. I move to approve ordinance number 3.359 on second reading, please. I'll second. Motion is made by Councilor uh, Rivera, second by Councilor Barrington. Please vote and prompt to do so. And that ordinance passes unanimously. With no other business before the Parker Town Council, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Right. Motion is made by Council Member Rivera, second by Council Member Hendricks. Please make your last vote tonight. And Josh, I'm going to take for you. And that passes unanimously, and we're adjourned at 748.